And we'll be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue, it's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in the Hello? and Spooky. Eric. And tonight, Eric. They'll be asking Squ- the this fucking thing is useless. Is I mean, what is the point in giving me a, a, a handset that doesn't even work? Jesus, do you know what this is? It's a bad sign. I mean, I'm not one for omens, but this, this is a bad omen. I mean, Jesus, the fucking... But now, here on Channel One, oh. it's time for something far more. Wasn't on. <laughs> Lucky, could have been carnage. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Eric, technical yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, standing by. Yeah, yeah, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Good Behind evening, me I'm is a true TV Behind legend. Me. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man. Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. But as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. Ten it's seconds, time. Places. Let's start the show. It's time. In five, four, In three, five, four, three. Cracking stuff. Cracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true. Evening, and I can hardly yes, really believe it true. myself. We are back for this special one off reunion episode of Just the Job. And to be clear, it is the show that you remember with the good old sidekick, little Jimmy Chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY, and of course, some special surprise guests from Just Dave's the Job. Dave's Emporium of Televisual Wonders. How can I help you today? Okay. Will you be requiring anything special from no the Emporium today, mate? Tonight. This is not a good omen. It's for me. Right. He's a Peter okay. Clement promise. Just hang on, will you? So let's kick Stand things by, off tonight with a little scant and the mighty go, Eamon. Because you would all surprise What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is me. <laughs> you naughty, naughty <laughs> fuckers! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Need it? Frank. Did you know about look at that face? You fucking did, didn't you? <laughs> Fuck us a lot of yeah. Peter, you thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion episode of Just the Job. I, I, I just I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's get you to the studio. No fucking do. Damn it, I can't believe it. Those fucking dancers all the way along. They're all fun. This way, Peter, mind your step there now. I don't know. I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm, I'm out. Phew! Right, I'm back. Poor it. Incredible. Deja vu, mate. Yeah, how did you know? First sign of madness. Is it? Probably. I'm not a doctor, mind. I'm not. I've got a lot to live for. Oh, you'll be alive still, mate. Just a bit, you know, loopy loo wibbity dib dad. Do you really think so? You'll get your own room, though. Yeah, stop winding me up, Dave. Probably padded. I'm very... Oh, there's Eamon. Got to go. 
Thank you so much. That was fun. Thank Lisa you very Clement much indeed. running for Prime Minister. Yeah. I've got yeah. to go. Have you both? So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this? Eamon. Eamon. How long have you been planning? Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement. You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. And I, at that time, was barely a twinkle in the milkman's eye. No, that, that's not right. That's Dorothy Hammerman. Wait, no, 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 no. Stop the music. Stop the music. That was me working out what had gone wrong with the script already. Eric. I'll just come on, though, shall I? Eric. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hammerman! <laughs> Having a few scheduling issues. Yeah, it would appear so, Mrs. Hammerman. Soldier on though, eh? Soldier on though, eh? <laughs> <laughs> mwah, mwah. Oh, shall we? Here's one finger for the north, two fingers to the south, and we can all apologise tomorrow. <laughs> oh, drink again. Uh, lovely to have you with us, Mrs. Hammerman. Lovely so tell us, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement House? I have no idea. I have no idea. Excellent. Ask me something else. I have to stick to the script. <laughs> Says who? I mean, Eric. <laughs> you can just ignore him, darling. He won't mind. If I don't stick to the script... It's oh, that's a good word, yeah. Let's call this one carnage. Can I give you a bit of advice that I told Petey a few years ago now? Oh, I, I'm sure we'd all love to hear some Dorothy Hammerman wisdom. Mm, nothing very sweet, eh? Oh, no, no, I have a very low tolerance. Trust me, oh, no, no, it helps. Low... Nothing too drastic. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. What was in that, then? Uh, Peter, let's put your palate to the test. <laughs> oh, another drink to go on the list. wine. <laughs> You were going to give us some of your wisdom. Uh, I just did, darling. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everyone! <laughs> oh, I don't think he even opened his mouth. Nobody's ever had that problem with you, Dorothy. You horrible man! <laughs> Enjoy the show! Mwah. Mwah. I'll see you for the finale. You will. <laughs> In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this? Chew me up! Well, it's little Jimmy Chisel, obviously. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bonds. It most certainly is not. OK, well, is that a number two? Yeah, it's a little Jimmy Chisel. <laughs> Been a while. It has that. It has that. Is that for me? Thought you might need a copy after that last guest. Oh, I can only drink a cheeky little glider. Oh, uh, whatever you say, Although boss. I do like coffee. <laughs> Jimmy, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then? We could have predicted his path to household name. Wait a minute, you cheeky little bastard. Oh, did I not say? It's got a little kick to it. You know what I mean, Eamon? Uh, I don't really. Oh, relax, mate. There's no need to pretend to have a drink with me. No need to pretend to have a drink with me. Don't know what you mean. Actually, that's quite nice. Don't know what you mean. Bit nostalgic. It brings tears to me eyes. You see... Pete was always pulling booze-related pranks on the set of Just a Job. He's lucky nobody lost a finger. Or a foot. What's that now? <laughs> Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! <laughs> Thanks for the coffee. Oh, you won't be saying that when the acid kicks in. Only joking. <laughs> now, before we bring our next guest on, now, let's take a look at a classic on, clip from Just a Job. Look. Peter, it's on that monitor there so if you'd like to take a look. Called, uh, I'll drink to that. And, we and that's about two minutes. minutes. Right, I will go and take a look at that man. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Came up with the pub one night, I think. Anyway, it was not going very well. 
<laughs> yep, that's it. I think we can safely say we've got him drunk. Interesting choice. I'll drink to that. Uh. Lovely, Danny Hatch. Yeah, why not? Got to keep the old grey matter lubricated after all. Can we reset, please? Well, it's time for a segment that the papers have called explosive and the prudes have called inadvisable, reckless and puerile. It's our drink to that. Now, I want to say up front that our floor manager, Frank, advised us against doing this, didn't you, Frank? Yes. I definitely did advise against doing this. It's a bad idea. Get off the screen, Frank! Get on with it, then. Tonight's guest fancies himself as a bit of a handyman. It's everyone's favourite TV personality, it says here on the card, Peter Glamour. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I've never met you before, have I, PC? You don't mind if I call you PC, do you? You can call me whatever you like, pal. Not according to my contract. Well, if you've read a paper at any point this week, you know how this bit goes. So, shall we make a start? Total stranger who I've never met before? Yeah, don't labour the point, LJ. Cats are better than dogs. I'll drink to that. Funny, always had you down as a dog person. What can I say, Mrs C likes a stroke of an evening. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Coffee is better than tea. Especially first thing in the morning. Hey! You're supposed to say, I'll drink to that. Oh, shite, sorry. I'll drink to that. Hey! Yeah, I'll see what you did there. I always said you had excellent eyesight. Uh, I'll drink to that. Oi, hey! that wasn't in rehearsals. <sighs> Skinny is better than Binny Bob Jean shorts. Never heard of either of them. So I guess I'll drink to that. Skinny was in here last week doing this. Oh, is that who she was? Yeah. I thought she was. Yeah. That's the way she kept banging on about her girls parents. are better than boys. And Mrs. C is the best of the lot, and I will definitely drink to that. Oh, now this one's going to be hard for you because we both know how much you want that shot. I do. I do want that shot. Little Jimmy Chisel, popular and handsome daytime TV entertainer and master craftsman. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it does, on it? Look. It says, Little Jimmy Chisel and all that good stuff about me is better than fading amateur woodworker Peter Clement. Fading amateur woodworker? <laughs> yeah, that's what it says here on the card. Let me see that card. See? You've written that in pen, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> oh, I'll drink to that. I'm a little worried we're heading off track here, Eric. Yeah, wrong guest. I'll adjust the pad. It's up to you, though, is it, Eric? Of Dave course, knows what he's doing. In the episode, yeah. I wasn't talking about I that. sure do. Christ. Jimmy got his lips bit. Going in five, four, three. Do that segment again. What fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Till me up? What's that mean? Is that some sort of gay thing? That's, uh, OK. Um, a man who sounds a little different to what I expected. It's your sidekick of almost 13 years. Little Jimmy Chisel! Hi, Jimmy, what's going on to you? That's Martin and I'm funny. We're Peter's parents. Oh, you're late. You're rude. Right, OK, well, let's just get on with it, shall we? You're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit of Peter's life. What would you say are the main differences between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? The on-screen one has better hair and makeup. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. No doubt you'll try. What's that, Dad? Oh, don't you two start. Well, we, we had a little bit of archive footage here, but I don't think we'll bother as the script clearly means feck all. Oh, shit. What were the names again? Martin and Fanny Clement. Martin and Fanny Clement, everybody. Is that it? Yep. Jesus, a racist crook! What a bloody waste of time! Yeah, you're not the first person to say that. 
I'm sorry about this. See you for the song, pet. <laughs> In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Ten words about Peter. I only need two. My conscience. Can't place the voice. Let's try the face. On you come. No, still not. Good for you. Good for you. Got your names on the ballot too. <laughs> You'll be famous soon enough. Or infamous. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So, what's it like to be friends with Peter Clement? Well, even though it feels like I've known him forever because of all the TV shows, I've, I've only really known Peter as more than an acquaintance for a very short period of time. We're still on our best behaviour. <laughs> Precisely. Friendship takes time. Shared experience. <laughs> That's all to come for Peter and I. Uh, Julia Smallberry, everybody. <laughs> that it? Yeah, yeah, we're way off track. Here. Let's off the tracks. It's this person. Quite soon then. <laughs> Very likely. Yeah, would you please just go? Oh, oh me. <laughs> but of course, it wasn't that only. That was brave, course, Eamon. It wasn't, only... was brave. it wasn't only just the job that the nation invited. Sorry, what was brave? Being that rude Sorry, to the next Prime Being Minister. <laughs> I don't think I was. Sorry, who? Julia Salisbury, the woman you just told Julia to fuck Salisbury. off, the woman you just told to is going to be the next Prime Minister. Is going to be the next Prime Minister. She's... Yep. She's... Yep. Oh, shit. Uh, let's have a look at a little bit of Petey there, shall we? Let's have a look at a little bit of Petey there. Dorothy. And a couple of minutes back. Well, I check and see if my passport's still in date. Same monitor as before, Eric. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, Eric, we're four guests in, we're horribly off track, and I might be arrested for treason or something. What's your plan? At this point, the smart thing for me to do is to deny I ever met you. Back then, the socialite, but since received a call into ministry, and became a writer in the Iron Church circles instead. Yeah, bottoms up. I've always been a fan of his and the socialites. <laughs> Did always regret it not meeting him. Yeah, there's a drink. Steady on there, mate. We've still got the last section. Oh, oh I'm doing God's work, Eric. God's work. <laughs> Opened a pub. And he's having a drink. Free say, everybody. The archbishop in the history of the church. The Archbishop of Pendleshire, Richard Cockley. Now then, Archbishop, a few years ago when you were a pop star. Nah, my misspent you. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> we all love the socialites, don't we, everybody? Yeah. Really? You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> anyway, back then, you agreed to go on just the job to do a little thing called I'll Drink to That. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, I saw the first two, and I remember feeling very strongly this was something that might come back to haunt me. Well, you're not wrong about that. Play the jiggle! Uh, right, Archbishop, it's a very simple <laughs> game. I'm going to read out a series of statements to you. If you agree with them, you shout out, I'll drink to that, and you down one of these glasses of holy vodka that we've laid out for you. You know, I've not seen an array like this since the socialites played in San Palmarino. <laughs> <laughs> now, for legal reasons, can you confirm that you're doing this of your own free will and that we're not blackmailing you or coercing you in any way? Not coercing, no, more like ambushing, but I've never been one to turn down a challenge, and after all, our good Lord even enjoyed a tipple from time to time. The church isn't all jumble sales and child abuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Cats are better than dogs. That clearly you've not met my poodle Beelzebub. Oh. Yep. <laughs> all right. Coffee is better than tea. That, that's clearly heresy. <laughs> we will get you. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean... Ch you know who that is, do you? I'd be rather fond of country music these days. Except, gosh, that's broken a few hearts amongst our old fans, I'd imagine. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Short's hit song, Do What I Say or Go Back to the Basement, is better than Graham Bannon's classic hit from the 50s, If You Won't Be My Lady, Lady. Better than Graham Bannon. I'll drink to that. 
I can't believe you actually said that. <laughs> On with the game. White fronts are better than boxer shorts. I'll agree to that. Fantastic. We're well, learning a lot here. Mm. <laughs> a bacon sandwich is better than fish and chips. Oh, that's a tricky one. Mm, uh, sauce on the sandwich. If you like. I'll drink to that. Girls are better than boys. Mm. Bloody drink to that. Language. <laughs> Archbishop. <laughs> Charity is better than thrift. Nah, that's a bit theosophic. Theos <laughs> that's, that's a bit deep. <laughs> These the shots go straight to my head, you know. Oh, I know that look. We should have given up after the first break. What? That's where it all started to go wrong. It's not so bad. Did you not see that last section? Have you got sudden onset amnesia? <sighs> Please don't do anything stupid. I'll think about it. Please don't. You think getting smashed on live television would have ruined the Archbishop's career? But he actually did the opposite. He's more popular than ever now. And of course he presents hymns of joy on free. Are you right, Eamon? Ten seconds. Eamon? Going in five, God works in mysterious four, ways. three. In this case, it was through me and a dodgy off license. Eamon, we're live. Eamon, we're live. Eamon! Eamon, you daft twat! <laughs> Daft twat, yes, that's me. <laughs> Here we go now, sorry about that, yes. Well, we unforgettable stuff that, yes. there. <laughs> well, you took all the credit. Well, you took all the credit. While you... While you... While you... While you... While you... Are you having a stroke? Pal, come on, Eamon. You're a stolt in the undergrowth. You're a stolt in the undergrowth. What's the matter, mate? That! Oh, nothing's the matter. I'm a snowflake in the winter. I'm a, a fold in the napkin. You have a sip of this, mate. Oh, what's that? I don't really drink. Well, that's probably the problem. Just a little sip. There you go. How's that? Actually, that, uh, that was actually quite nice. So, so what is the problem, nice. mate? So, so what is the problem? Well, we're off script, well, you're drunk, we're off script. and the show's gone off the rails. Well, so, you know, I, I think we need to bail. Well, you're, 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 you're the boss, so how do you want it to end? You're, you're the boss, so how do you want it to end? We get the guests out, we sing the tune, we get the everybody's out, happy. The tune. Well, we'll do that then now, shall we? Well, There's we'll still a lot of air time. Ah, don't worry about it, Eric. I've seen worse disasters than this. Have you ever met Graham Bannon? Not really. Why? Doesn't matter. Not really. Why? Doesn't matter. Right, Eric, get the guests out. Get the mic'd up, right. Get the guests out. Who's in uh, charge of, here of you Who's chaps? In, uh, right. Trying to pick the next guest, on? mate. Break in the middle to an F sharp B and E thing with a passing C sharp D and E for a triple on the build up and then back in and around again. All right. Excellent. Eric, how's it going? Uh, I think we're about ready here. Cracking. Come on then, Eamon. Eamon. Come on then, Eamon. Come on. Come on. Hello again, everybody. Sorry about the mix-up, but I think Hello we can again, still get things back on track. It's not the show that any of us expected, but to be honest, I think we could have gone on for a little bit longer. If we'd stuck to the fucking script, Dave! Yeah, but in the end, a show is like a family... You're all right, Eamon. You can gnash and wail as much as you want, but in the end, you just got to slap a smile on, come together and save it. And what brings people more together than a good old sing-song? Take it away, chaps! Do you want to say goodnight? No, oh, no, you seem to have everything under control there. Okay. Thanks for watching, and here we go. When it seems like everything's about to fall apart, I've got just a job. When you need a leader with a massive, great big arm, I've got just
Singing? Now the show. Well, it, you it feel like was sure, dancing? probably. Oh, thank you so much. You really saved us there. Yeah, it's not my first rodeo, Eric. Let's see if we can't do you the same for the country. More, and more people yeah. are looking to advance for answers and finding that we have them. From inequality what what to does he mean by that? Is he going into politics or something? I'll explain it on the way to your therapist, Damon. Even if we have to ruffle a few guilted feathers along the way. Oh, imagine what it's going to look like when they're all complete. Such a sweetie.